Embryologically, as we develop, there are homologs, and they're called homologous columns sometimes, or homologous groups of neurons. And when they develop in the, in the embryological development of the nervous system, these homo homolo homologous columns or homologous groups of neurons are all developing at the same time. And as they develop, it's like a, it's like a town developing, um, uh, like in the uh, out west in the early days of the United States, for example. There may be um, a whole bunch of settlers, like uh, going out for a land rush, and they all claim their stake their claims, and they got all these little um, places where people got their farms and so on, and they've got their stakes their claims, and so now you've got the neurons developing, and there's all these different little areas, and as they, the um, the uh, more people move into the area, they actually become little clusters of people, usually around rivers or crossroads, and these become towns. And everybody in the town knows everybody else in the town as the town grows, because they're small towns. And as the towns keep growing, there's a need sometimes to communicate with the other towns. And so everybody in town knows everybody else in town, but then they build roads to the other towns because one town might be near a river and they might be able to supply water where the other town might be uh, near a farm that has uh, cows and they can supply meat to the, to the farmers that farm the corn and get these interactions. But there's still these little towns and these little towns as they keep growing, still everybody knows everybody in that town. And there's a connection between everybody in that town. And there's usually a, you know, community pride for everybody in that town. But they're dependent also on all the other connections with all the other roads to all the other towns. But everybody in that town is connected in one way or another. And they're connected by roads to these other towns. Well, in the nervous system, there are these pools of neurons which develop together. And these are like the towns as they develop and get bigger and bigger. But they're all connected to each other from, from time of starting embryologically to the time of the whole person's life. And these are called the homologous pools of neurons or the homologous columns. Sometimes the columns run vertically from top to bottom in the nervous system, like the reticulospinal pathways are all part of what's called the intermediate lateral cell column. And the intermediate lateral cell, lateral cell column is, uh, is, is one column, and there's intermediate medial cell column that's, is, they're, they're retic they carry the reticular spinal pathways. And, and there are um, pools of neurons that run vertically, and then there are pools of neurons which sort of cluster at a lo so local level. So you've got the right and left cerebellum. The right cerebellum and the left cerebellum are like their own two towns, and they're all connected to each other, and they're also connected to the right and left side are connected to each other. It's sort of like Minneapolis-St. Paul. Two big towns, but they're pretty closely connected. Um, but they're like, then if you go down from there to Chicago, there's not that big a connection. And so the connection between Chicago might be like a, in the ponds or something. You know, it's a, or maybe um, the cerebellum, maybe we should say it's in the medulla or something, where it's a little distant away. But there's still strong connections, but there's, they're not so closely connected. So these homologous pools of neurons are homologous columns. And the right and left mesencephalon develop individually and are connected to each other and connected to other parts of the brain. But each one of the right and left mesencephalon is homologous pool of neurons. And the right and left pons and the right and left medulla and the right and left cortex and the right and left thalamus, these are areas which when they develop, they all develop together, connected to each other closely. So everybody in that one town knows everybody else in that one town. So everybody in the right mesencephalon is connected to everybody else in the right mesencephalon. Everybody in the left mesencephalon is connected to everybody else in the left mesencephalon from embryological development. So when you stimulate the dentate nucleus in the cerebellum to put output, it goes to the opposite red nucleus. And the opposite red nucleus is connected because of this embryological connection of everybody in town, his connection with each other from developmental days. Everybody in town knows everybody else. Um, that right mesencephalon, say if it's the left dentate nucleus to the right mesencephalon, spills over and has this effect on the whole rest of the mesencephalon. There are connections, close connections with everywhere else in the right, left mesencephalon, much closer than any connections with anywhere else in the, uh, in the body. So that when you stimulate the red nucleus, which is actually stimulates, uh, as you know, a flexor uh, pathway, the red nucleus fires down and contralaterally and stimulates flexors on the opposite side of the body from where it is. But you get that re effect, but you also get a spilling over into the entire mesencephalon, um, and that mesencephalic, mesencephalic, excuse me, mesencephalic autonomic centers can also fire, and the mesencephalic autonomic centers um, are particularly uh, related to the, um, the uh, pupillary reflexes with the edger westphal nucleus, but they also have descending mesencephalic reticulospinal pathways, which affect sympathetic and uh, really uh, sympathetic activity all the way down the entire um, intermediate lateral cell column.